Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about the differences between producers, consumers, and decomposers in an ecosystem. So our first one is going to be a producer. And as the name implies, they are going to produce their own food. Now, when we think about in nature, what that means, it doesn't mean that they can cook, but rather they're going to do photosynthesis. And they're going to convert solar energy into stored chemical energy that we call food. So organisms that are producers would include plants, phytoplankton, kelp, and some bacteria, often cyanobacteria. So when we look at producers, producers produce their own food through the power of photosynthesis, and we also can call producers autotrophs because they automatically make their own food. So when we look at an ecosystem, your producers are going to be the organisms responsible for taking that solar energy and automatically making their own food through the process of photosynthesis, um, and now that um, those producers will be what store the energy in the ecosystem, making it available for all the animals um, that eat those plants. So when we look at ocean ecosystems, though, we also have phytoplankton and algae that are able to do photosynthesis. So it doesn't have to be a plant like a tree or a flower. Um, it can also be other types of organisms. So here I like this picture because it shows like cottontail, like plants as producers, but you also have algae that can be a producer doing photosynthesis and producing its own food. Now we have something that relies on producers. We call these things consumers because they need to consume their energy or they need to eat. So organisms that rely on other organisms for their energy and food supply. Now they're also called heterotrophs. So these would be things like humans, wolves, snakes, and bees. Basically, anything that is not a, an autotroph will be a heterotroph. So when we look at this energy pyramid here, we can see if we ignore the plants at the bottom, here we have our consumers. So consumers eat. Now consumers can be herbivores or carnivores or omnivores. But basically, they're going to rely on another organism for their energy. And because they cannot make their own food, we consider them to be heterotrophs. And lastly, we have these organisms called decomposers that are responsible for returning nutrients to the earth. So decomposers are organisms that break down or organic matter, so like a dead animal or um, like a tree that has fallen over or leaves that have fallen to the ground. Um, but they break down this organic material and they recycle it back into the soil. So ecosystems and nature is dependent on decomposers, um, which include bacteria and fungus. So uh, I think a common misconception, though, is that people assume that like a fungus would be an autotroph because it doesn't have a mouth. But technically, it does not um, do photosynthesis. It's a fungus. And so it is a heterotroph because it gets its energy as it breaks down that dead or decaying material. So on this tree stump or knocked over tree here, you can see this white stuff that is the um, fungus that is decomposing or breaking down that log uh, back into the earth and in the soil. Now, I also want to be clear that um, decomposers and scavengers are different things. So while scavengers may eat dead carcasses, um, they are not recycling those nutrients back into the earth, so they are different from decomposers. Um, there's also another word I should have put in here called a detritivore, um, like a maggot or, or something like that, like eats dead things. Um, again, that is not... A decomposer rather than just something that is eating something already dead. All right, good job.